In this video, we're going to look at setting up a project from scratch. We'll check some basic audio routing to make sure you can hear any audio in the project, indicating the system set up correctly. We'll insert tracks, buses and effects. And once we have a setup that we're happy with, we'll see how to save it as a project template that we can use as a starting point for future projects. To start a new project from this completely blank position, we have two options. We can either select Main Menu File, New, and this will allow us to select from a choice of templates. The other method is to press Ctrl N, which will open the standard default template. For now, we'll use this method as this creates a new file without having to name it first, regardless of your option settings. If you use the first method and you're asked to name the project, it's because you have per project audio selected in preferences. I personally think this is a better way to work as all project files are stored in one folder and therefore easier to keep track of. This is the default setting. We looked at project save and setup preferences in more detail in the setup videos. And we should now be looking at your default normal template. Mine has no tracks for purposes of this demonstration, but it does already have some buses. The first thing we're going to check is that our master bus has its output set to our main audio device outs and is our default bus. They may not be set correctly if your main outs aren't your first outs, as is in the case of my system. We do this by opening the bus pane if it isn't already, and clicking on the master bus. We can then check in the inspector over to the left. From here, we can change the output. We can then see the selected output at the bottom of the left bus strip display, and it's confirmed in the downstream strip to the right. Finally, we check that the master bus is our default bus by right clicking on the master bus strip and checking that set as default bus is checked. It's possible to set any bus we choose as a default. It's also worth mentioning that there's nothing special about the master bus. It's just a regular stereo bus that happens to be called master, set as default, and all tracks and buses ultimately route to it. So if you ever end up in a project without a master bus, just create one and set it as default. Obviously, make sure that the output is set to your correct main out though. Once that's done, I'm going to insert audio and MIDI tracks by right clicking in the track head area. And we'll take a look at the menu here. There are options here to insert just MIDI or audio tracks, as well as from templates and track folders. We'll look at doing all of this later. For now, I'm going to insert multiple tracks. I'll leave the track counts at one and check that the audio output is set to master. The MIDI port I'll leave set to my first port, but you can change that choice from here. That's useful if you have a particular piece of hardware attack that you want to use for MIDI playback. We can also define sends here, and on the MIDI side, we can define an output channel number. All of these options can be changed later, and I'll explain them in more detail as well, so there's no need to worry if you're not sure about what to choose. Once we're happy with that, click on OK. And we'll see that now two tracks in the project. Next, we'll drag one of the loops that comes with Sona into the track area. Drag it out a little bit. Now we'll click play in the transport module or press the space bar. If all is set up correctly, you should be hearing some audio playback. Project templates can be as simple or as complex as you want them to be, but this example will be relatively simple. We'll see more complex setups later as we explore more features. I'm going to select the clip I've just inserted and then press delete to delete it. We're now going to look at setting a few preferences and options to suit the way we want to work and then save that as a template. Tempo and measure may be something you'd like to change from the default, and they can be changed as we saw earlier by clicking on the relevant display in a transport module of the control bar. I'm also going to set up the metronome how I like to use it, and right clicking on one of the metronome on off buttons will bring up the preferences for that. I like a count in of two measures and leave it off during playback, but on while recording. I also like to use a hi-hat sound from an external drum machine, so I click on the Use MIDI Note option, 
and set the port to 1, which is where my drum machine is attached. I leave the note on F sharp 3, which is the hi hat sound, but you can change it if you prefer, or use an audio generated metronome. Whichever method you use, the sounds for the first beat and other beats can be changed in the drop down menus, as can the volume for those beats. The audio output that the metronome is routed to can be changed here too. This can be useful if you're recording a band, for example, and only want the drummer to hear the click track. You can route the metronome to a separate output on your interface and send that to the drummer's headphones. Of course, you will need an interface with multiple outputs to be able to do that. Once happy, click on OK. Finally, I set the snap to my preferred resolution. For now, I'm going to leave this set at measure, and that's changed in the snap module in the control bar, which we'll be looking at in more detail later. Now let's look at setting up the track headers how we want them. At the top of the track header view, there are several presets to control which track controls are visible in the view. We looked at these briefly earlier, and we'll see how to set them up later. But whichever you choose here will become the default for this template when we save it. If you can't already see the bus pane, press Shift B or click on the Show Bus Pane icon. And we already have a master bus as well as a metronome and preview buses inserted. And we can add more if need be in a similar method to tracks. Click and drag on the divider if it isn't large enough. Then in the bus header area, right click and select Insert Stereo Bus. I'll rename this bus as a Reverb by double clicking on the name field. Now we can open the plugin browser and drag a reverb into it. This will automatically open the reverb's user interface where we can adjust parameters or load a preset. Effects can be added to tracks in exactly the same way. There's no limit to the number of tracks or buses you can insert or to the number of effects or synths inserted into your template. It really is whatever is most convenient for you. You can also set up as many project templates as you want. To save it for future use, we select File, Save or Save As, or press Ctrl S. We'll type a name for the project. Select Save As Type Template, which automatically takes us to a template folder. Then click on Save. Now that template is available for us to use as a starting point whenever we start a new project. In this section, we're going to look at track templates, how to insert them and how they're created. We'll also see one way in which a couple of screen sets can be useful. Track templates are a very powerful feature of X2. Not only are there several presets that come with Sona, but you can also set up and save your own. I'll be inserting a track template containing Session Drummer 3. This drum synth is exclusive to the producer version, and as a result of the buses included with the track template, we're going to see some fairly complex routing in this example. I'll explain routing and ways to use various setups later when we look at audio routing in detail. So let's insert this track template. We can either right click in the track edit area and select Insert from Track Template, follow the sub menus to the template we want, or use the media browser, drag and drop a template into the clips pane. Either way, Sona loads a template, and I'm going to select Soft Synth Track Templates, Session Drummer. Groovy Kit Multi Out Dry. Sona's now loaded that. I'll press F to fit the project, and we'll see that a folder with 13 tracks have been inserted. This is my track screen set, so buses are not visible here. I'll press 2 to jump to my bus screen set, where we can see the buses. If I open the browser, switch to the synth rack, we can see that Session Drummer has been loaded. Everything is routed and set up ready to use. All of this setup and routing is from one template. It's a very powerful feature as I mentioned. So let's explain this in a little more detail and switch back to my track screen set. The folder contains the MIDI source track at the top where we can either load in existing MIDI drum clips, find a MIDI browser or record or draw in MIDI data for playback. We'll be looking at how to do that in later videos. If I click on that track and open the inspector, you can see that the track is routed to the Session Drummer. That in turn has its audio outputs assigned via its mixer page to the 12 output ports, and the synth tracks that are also loaded into the folder have their inputs assigned to Session Drummer. 
As you can see, all of the input ports, which are actually session drummers outs, are listed. And each track is assigned from its own port. The track output ports are assigned to the various buses that were loaded into the bus view. And if I step through the tracks, you can see the output changing in the inspector. The kick, snare and hi-hat on the drum bus, toms on the tom bus, and cymbals on the cymbal bus. There's also a percussion bus. We're going to look at all of this routing in more detail later. As you can see, a template can save us a lot of work, especially if it's for something as complex as this that we use regularly. So how do we set up a template? To create a track template, it's simply a matter of setting up the track or tracks how we want them, and then saving it. First, I'm going to collapse the session drummer folder. Then drag in Dimension Pro and load a base patch. Now I'm going to insert a new stereo bus and call it Backline and assign its output to my master bus. Switch to my bus screen set. Create some space. And insert new stereo bus, which as I said is going to be called Backline. Call up the inspector, check that its output is set to master, which it is. Once that's done, switch back to my track screen set. And I'm going to load a base preset into the Pro channel on Dimension Pro's output track. We should now have a good sounding bass. Now rather than do that every time I want a bass track, I can save it as a template and then load it into future projects by selecting it in the same way as I just did the Session Drummer template. When you save a track as a template, it will save everything connected to that track for recall later. This includes any buses that the track is routed through, any effects on the track or the buses, any synths that the track is routed to with patch settings, in fact everything as it is already set up. We'll be looking at adding and inserting effects and sends in more detail later. And several tracks at once can be saved as a template, so for example, if you set up several separate tracks for recording drums, they can all be selected and saved as a track template in exactly the same way the Session Drummer one was. This will save all the routing through any buses and compressors that there may be, and this can then be loaded as we saw earlier. Now let's save this as a track template. Right click and select Save as Track Template. Navigate to where you'd like to keep it. Name it and click on OK. You can also use this method to set up a bus template. For example, on the backline bus, I can set a high pass filter for about 40 Hz, switch to my bus screen set, open up the Backline Pro channel, turn on the high pass filter. It's already at about 40 Hz. Insert a dummy track assigned to the Backline bus, which I'll then use to save as a template. I switch back to my track screen set, insert a track, Assign that output to my backline bus. And then save that track as a template. Type a name for it. And hit save. Now if I need a backline bus in a project, all I need to do is insert the dummy track as a track template and then delete the track. This will leave the backline bus in place. We'll look at inserting more buses using this method later.